But today we're looking at the USD S&P 500 uh, auto call. Uh, important date there is closing date on the 14th. We'll come to the, those sort of details in a moment. Uh, from Investec, I've got uh, Brian McMillan and Sonia Lynch. Uh, morning to both of you. Morning to everyone for joining us. Appreciate your time. We've got a presentation here. Uh, we'll go through the slides. Quick intro from Investec. We'll go through the slides. Uh, if you've got questions, drop them into the Q&A box. And if I can stress Q&A rather than the chat, because I lose track of chat sometimes, uh, we'll pick up those questions either as we're going along or we'll grab them uh, at the end. Uh, Brian, Sonia, uh, welcome to both of you. If you just want to do us a quick intro, then we'll kick off with the, uh, the PowerPoint. Sure. Thanks very much, Simon. Uh, appreciate the time and uh, those that have joined. Uh, so, Simon, this is one of our structured products. Uh, we've done a number of structured products over the years. And as you know, the, the, uh, not only the performance of them has been very good, but the take up is increasing over time. And I think that's a, a function of what we're able to offer the market. In this particular one is a, is a good example. What we have is an auto call and we'll go through what an auto call is. But uh, what it's really offering the the investor in, in South Africa at the moment is the opportunity to invest into the S&P 500, which is obviously the American market, mm -hmm. in US dollars by means of a, a very simple and easy to use instrument that's listed on the JSE. And uh, like all our structured products, we like to, to add in capital protection. Uh, and we find that at the moment, that's of particular relevance uh, because of where the market is. You know, the market's quite high. It's had a big bounce. Uh, but all of those things combined and, and to try and make it into something that's, that's quick and easy for people to invest in, we're finding that that's gaining a lot of traction at the moment. Uh, you mentioned there, Brian, uh, structured products certainly have, uh, I don't know, maybe the last five years, maybe the last decade, sort of gained more more uh, uh, attraction on, 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 on both the local but also the offshore space. And I suppose that's just a, it's a sense of, you know, back in the day, you simply bought a, a share and then you could buy even an ETF. And this just gives you a, a little more sort of nuance to it, particularly in terms of return, in terms of capital protection, um, and certainly has, has grabbed the, 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 the attention of, of investors, both uh, small and large yeah and I think you know we've changed that the way that we do our structured products uh, many years ago they were quite opaque they were for very high net worth individuals only or pension funds uh, over time they've been commoditized and they you know by listing on the JSE has been the thing that has really made them available to a lot of investors yeah uh, by doing that we provide a daily price so they no longer even though this is a, a three to five year investment, all of a sudden, you know, you can take your money out. You can value it on a daily basis. And all of those things have contributed to, uh, to the investments uh, appeal. But also, uh, you know, there's been the last couple of years have just really felt like uncertain times. You know, markets <laughs> have been high, interest rates are low, South Africa has been very turbulent and, and that added you know, capital protection that we can provide on these things have really struck a chord with the investor. Yeah, that, that's a fair point, and, and particularly with markets elevated. Let, let's get on to uh, some of the the, the, the the PowerPoint. As you mentioned, it, it's designed to, it, it's going to be a US dollar, and we'll, we'll delve into the mechanics of how that works. Uh, and we're looking at the S&P 500, which is obviously, uh, the, 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 well, I was going to say the main market in the US. Truthfully, that is just the, the global market. Uh, Brian, you mentioned a five-year, uh, the, 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 the growth. I want to quickly touch on on, on the, 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 the growth and the way it's been structured, um, and that is it's an eight percent per year cumulative uh, in, in U.S. dollars, and we'll we'll park the U.S. dollar for a moment. In essence, uh, it's saying to me, I, I, if the market is positive, I will get eight percent a year. If it if it exceeds eight percent, then I give up some of that potential upside. But if the market's up, you know, one percent in the first, and then two in the third, and you know, two in the second, I, I'm going to get that eight percent. That, that's correct, Simon. So one of the reasons why we've chosen this particular product is uh, the also call as such is that it gives you this 8% per annum. Mm -hmm. uh, and what we do is on day one, we measure where the S&P 500 index is. So let's say it's uh, 3,400 points. In three years time, 
if it's above 3,400 points, we will pay you back your initial investment plus three times 8%, so 24%. And that is irrespective of whether it's 1% uh, above the level or 50% above the level, you will get a 24% return. And one of the, the attractive things about this is in a, in a market where, uh, you know, like the S&P, where we have all time highs, uh, people are saying, well, you know, do I move my money into the S&P? Will it yeah. go another 10, 20, 30%? Here we're saying it only has to uh, remain flat over the next three years and you'll still make what is essentially a very good return, 8% in US dollars. If you compare that to US dollar interest rates of 25 basis points, something that's very good there. And the auto call function is that if it is positive at the third anniversary, it will call, it will pay 24%. Uh, if not, it rolls to the fourth anniversary. If it's positive, then it will call and it will then pay 32% because you've now been in for, for four years. Is that correct? Yes, that, that's correct. So, so what we've done with this structured product is really, um, you know, a lot of investors don't like necessarily to, to make an investment on a five-year investment term, although they're a little more comfortable when they do it in, in US dollars and over an index like the S&P. But what we've done is we've said, uh, this is an investment that may run for three years. If the index is flat or positive at that time, you get your 24%, the product ends. Mm -hmm. If not, it goes to year four. If not, it goes to year five. So it's between three and five years, which makes it a little bit uh, more palatable. Um, and you'll see, Sonia will take us through later on, uh, you know, how many times that's happened historically is quite <laughs> high. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and we're getting some uh, capital protection here, um, as long as it's you know, not below 60% of the initial index level. In other words, the index can lose 40%. Importantly, am I correct here that that's actually only going to matter on at the end of, of year five, because if it's negative in year three, it just rolls into four, and ditto if it's in four, it rolls into your end of year five. So, so this is, um, I think, probably the, the most complicated part of it that uh, investors, uh, if they understand this, they, they understand the whole thing, is that what we do is, as I said, we, we take the index on day one, uh, let's say it's 3,400. Um, if it hasn't called in year three, in other words, it's not mm -hmm. positive in year three, it's not positive in year four, and it's not positive in year five. Um, we then look at it and say, has it, we obviously know it's down because it mm -hmm. it's, uh, hasn't ended early. Has it fallen more than 40% from its initial index level? Now, 40% is it's quite a long way from here. Uh, we've only had one or two times in history that it's actually fallen more than 40% <laughs> yeah. over, over a five-year period. And uh, only on that last day do we say it hasn't called is it down more than 40%? If it's not down more than 40%, at that point, you get back your, uh, in, in this case, you'll get back US dollars converted back into RAND at the prevailing rate in five years time. Yeah, so and you actually get, and that, that dollars are as important, but you've got some illustrations coming up in a slide. So, the, so pretty much as long as on the anniversary in five years' time, which is 2025, which, you know, considering we're in a pandemic, feels about 17 lifetimes away, as, as long as on that date it's not more than 40% down, worst case, I get my money back. Uh, best case, we get, we get the auto call. There is a, a, a credit reference entity. We always point this out as, as one of the risks. Uh, and, you know, the, the Royal Bank of Scotland, uh, folks have to decide what they think the credit worthiness of the Royal Bank of Scotland is. Uh, if that concerns you... As well as investment. As, as well as investing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, yeah. yeah. So, so the, the, the structured products are always going to be, by their structure, now, if folks want to go down that rabbit hole, ask the questions, but in essence, you're walk, working off the balance sheets of Investec and Royal Bank of Scotland. So there is always an element of, of, of counterparty risk. Brian, the other thing, and you mentioned this in the intro, and this is quite a big deal. This is obviously a product I should look at and understand that I'm putting money for uh, at least three, maybe five years. Truth is, if a curveball comes along, um, because it's JC listed, I can actually exit uh, uh, early. Uh, there's going to be a bit of a spread, but I can get out of the product early if I need to. That's not what it's designed for, but if I need to, I can. 
Yes, exactly. And uh, so, Simon, we make that market on a daily basis. And, uh, you know, if the, if the market is up and the rand is weaker, it might be um, higher, you know, than, than your initial investment. Mm -hmm. it, it can happen that it's lower than your initial investment. So let's say the rand strengthens uh, significantly mm -hmm. against the, the dollar and the index is down. After one year, you, you know, the index might be down 5%. You might find that this is down 2 or 3%. But we will make always make that market on a daily basis uh, live on the JSE. So you can actually trade it through your stockbroker. Yeah. Uh, net of fees. I mean, there obviously are fees involved. But as far as the investor, you, you put in 100,000, you get the 100,000 uh, exposure structured product. The fees are internal to it. Minimum of 100,000, although uh, I've heard that some of the, the, the brokers, depending on your stockbroker, are uh, uh, offering uh, smaller amounts. The, the key point is as well is that you you get this via your stockbroker. This is technically an, an IP, uh, IPO process. Uh, you would apply with your stockbroker. They will be notifying clients about it uh, and you would then make your yeah. investment into it um, and again as it's it's JC traded this is the the, the the fun chart which when I first saw it I sort of looked something my niece had drawn and then sort of it, it came to in essence Brian it, it's showing us a couple of of, 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 of different outcomes and, and and where it might call or where there might be a, a potential a, a capital loss or a, a, a capital uh, return um, across sort of four different uh, potential uh, uh, outcomes coming out. Yes. Yeah, over to you. Yeah, um, so if I take it, uh, take it through, so as I said, uh, the initial index level, and that will be at the level that the S&P is on the 21st of September this year, mm -hmm. we will we'll mark that down, write that down and say, that is the level that we measure it against for the next three to five years. So if you look at the dark blue line there, index initially, uh, let's call it 3,400, the index falls over the next one or two years. But in year three, uh, when we measure it, and that's on the anniversary of the, of the product in three years' time, we measure it, we see that the index is up 12%. At that point, the investor, the, the investment ends, the investor gets the 8% times three, so mm -hmm. 24%, um, all of that return is in US dollar, converted back into RAND and pay out to the client. So at that point, uh, the investor you know, is out of the product and then we would issue a new product going uh, forward. If you look at the, the slightly lighter blue line there, and uh, there we see that the index is up for two and a half, three years, almost three years. On the anniversary date, however, it ends down at year three. And then in year four, it's down again. So it, relative to its initial index level. And then by the end of year five, it's down about 20%. However, on that last day, it hasn't fallen more than 40%. And at that point, the investor gets back their, uh, their full capital. Now it must be remembered that they get this full capital back as um, as the, the the U.S. dollar amount in five years' time. So, yes. if a client gives us a hundred thousand rand on day one, we will convert that into around about six thousand dollars, roughly, mm -hmm. sadly. Um, <laughs> and then let's say uh, it does get returned in five years' time, but the rand is twenty to the dollar. You could end up with more rands back than you put in even though you haven't earned a, a return on the actual S&P uh, auto call, you could have had a, a RAND uh, movement there. Gotcha, yeah. And then um, I think the other one just shows that the index, uh, this is the sort of light gold. Uh, the index is down in year three, um, even more than 40%. In year four, it starts to rally. And then year five, it's only up around about 5%. Uh, but that doesn't matter because as long as it's uh, you know flat or higher than the initial index level, you will get that return. And at that point, you'll get five times eight percent or forty percent return in U.S. dollars converted back into rand. And then the the last one just shows that the index is the the dark um, gold line shows that it's down in year three, down in year four, and then down more than forty percent in year five. And the important part there is that at that point, you actually would have a loss in line with 
whatever the index was. So it would be like holding a, an ETF or a um, or a share in that particular case. If it's down 42%, you would only get back 58% of your money because you would have lost 52 at that point. So um, that's a good point. And in it's essence, it's important to note that the loss is the full amount of, of the index. Yeah, the, the full amount. And, and, and it is, that's the one time when this essentially is going to be as if I had just gone and bought an S&P 500 uh, ETF on the JSC from and there's three or four different options I've got now. Um, sure. I would have taken that loss. And the, the light gold one, which goes below the barrier level, um, but this isn't a touch and, and, and barrier because it manages to go get its way back up. Uh, that's not a problem. This isn't a case of it touches the barrier and I will bet are off that barrier only yes. matters on at the end on year five that's correct yes uh, we've got some we've been talking the currency and i mean parking decide because the currency gets a bit head bending at points but in essence what what you guys at invest tech are doing is you take my czar you turn it into as you point out at, at 1650 uh, just over six thousand dollars um that then gets invested i'm not only going to get the, the the moves in the index there's also potentially currency moves which depending which way the currency goes could enhance or frankly detract if the rand is stronger over that period Period. Uh, over the next five years, uh, it'll take some of the shine off my return. Uh, if the rand is weaker, it essentially adds uh, some 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 benefit to that return over that period. Yeah. Yes, that's that's correct. Uh, so Simon, I'll, I'll just go through the one example here. If we look at uh, the year three, the second line. Mm -hmm. So the initial investor puts in uh, ten thousand rand. The rand uh, on the day that uh, we trade, the twenty first of March. Uh, in 1650, we converted into $6,060. Uh, the index after three years is up 10%, which means it's positive. Therefore, mm -hmm. you get three times eight or 24%. But that 24% is on the $6,060. Yeah. And at that point, you, you have a return of $7,515, uh, which are going to then be put back into your stockbroking account uh, and that depends on where the RAND is in three years' time. So if the RAND has weakened and it's 18 to the dollar, uh, you would get 7,500 times 18, which is $135,000. Or if it has actually strengthened and the, the RAND is at 15 to the dollar, in that case, you can see you would only get back um, 112,000 uh, RAND at that time. So you can see the effect that the RAND has on it. Uh, very much like you say with the with the trackers that you have, or uh, you know, index trackers uh, in US yeah. dollars on the JSE. Yeah, that's a fair point. I mean, we, we, when we're buying those assets, we take the currency risk, we take the currency benefit, depends which way it goes over the period. Uh, someone asked me this morning where I think the RAND will be in five years. If I knew that, I would own islands by now. Um, I did, the RAND trades, it moves. I, I can promise you it will move. Um, sometimes up, sometimes down. Yeah. It, it, it never seems to go sideways. Well, not for more than a, a minute or two. Um, the the S&P 500 itself, of course, is, and I said it's the largest index in the U.S., it, largest index in the world, uh, the 500 largest American uh, companies registered were listed in the US. Uh, it's actually apparently 504 because of course Alphabet, there's two of them and um, et cetera, et cetera. But it's only with one Alphabet. It's like when we had two Mondays and, and in fact for a while there, to 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 invest techs. um and, and you know Brian, we can delve into this or touch on it a bit, but this is the, this is the the you know the biggest of the big companies uh, globally. Your your Apple's the first two trillion dollar company uh, uh, in the world. Your Amazon's, your Microsoft's, and you know all the way down to financials, utilities, and the rest. Yes, um, I'll let uh, Sonia go to Sonia. this particular slide. Um, Sure. Um, so that's that's correct, Simon. So 500 major listed blue chip uh, companies. And I think what's nice to highlight here is uh, in terms of uh, sector split, you see quite a large proportion uh, or, or, or segment going towards uh, information technology and healthcare, which is mm -hmm. obviously very relevant at these times. And the companies that are outperforming uh, their peers in this particular time. So as you mentioned, Facebook, Apple, um, Visa, 
Microsoft, very powerful companies. And whilst um, the S&P 500 has recovered significant, significantly as a result of um, such high exposure to um, tech, it's also the reason why we've structured this particular product as an auto call being that you only require the index to be flat or positive on a three to five year um, outlook, which we think is, is, is a fair assumption or at least a fair expectation mm -hmm. um, from these uh, strong companies and also very well diversified in, in terms of sectors. Yeah, I mean, it, certainly, I mean, you know, tech, obviously the big one. I, I know I hadn't looked at, a, at, a, at, a, at an index, at, at the sectors in a while. And it, it, I mean, it, probably a year or so ago, it was financials in number two the slot. And now I see it, it's healthcare. Yeah. That's one of the beauties of an index. They're kind of, in that sense, they're self-correcting. You know, we're in a pandemic, healthcare stocks are up. So your, your index therefore carries more healthcare and, and so sort of auto-corrects as circumstances on, on the ground change. I imagine 20 years ago, there was probably hardly any uh, infotech in, in, in the S&P 500. Exactly right. Um, and then, Sonia, a whole bunch of, of backtesting. And, and this is where the, the math nerd in me gets very, very excited. I, I, I love backtesting. Um, in, in essence, looking at, at, at the different scenarios um, over, over what have you gone back here, some 15 years, um, and in which cases uh, would there have been a call in three, four, or five years? Uh, would there have been a, a loss? You want to quickly talk us through, through, through this slide? Sure. So what we've done is we've backtested this index all the way to 2000 because we don't want to obviously uh, cherry pick data and, mm -hmm. and show you guys the, the bull market since since 08. Um, so this does cover periods where there were severe market crashes. And what we're trying to show in this slide is what would have happened in or, or how would the auto call product would have uh, would have behaved under those uh, various uh, time periods. So the result of that is actually that we notice in particular with the S&P 500 that an auto call has a high propensity to call in its first opportunity. So in this case in year three. So if you have a look at the graph on the top right, 70% of the time this auto call actually calls in year three, meaning mm -hmm. you get the 24% in dollars. So it's a very high likelihood. And this does, as I mentioned, covered uh, periods like 08, even, even this COVID pandemic uh, uh, crash recently, and, and still the results are quite good. Yeah, it was then important. Back to Sorry. 2000 would have also included the beginning of the dot-com, in fact, the dot-com collapse, Correct. which was uh, Correct. late 2000 to 2001. Yeah, yeah. And, and in, that, in that scenario, um, I think what's important for investors to note is it, it's always the fear of losing capital, right? You never yeah. want to put your invest, investment in a, a, your money in an investment that's going to lose capital. And even over those uh, significant crashes, never has it breached over a five-year period that 60% barrier. So that's very important because obviously an investor has the choice to do they buy the S&P direct, the ETF, mm -hmm. which is easily available, in which case they can go, get all the upside from here. Um, but in those scenarios where in five years' time the index is net down, we actually return uh, return your capital back. So that happened 19% of the time. So that's still viewed as an outperformance because had you bought the underlying itself, you would have actually been in a lost position. I got you, of course, yes, because it would, it would have been a negative return, but you got your capital yes. back. So, I mean, and, and I appreciate now, we'll point everyone to the to the little asterisk in the bottom uh, left-hand corner, past performance, we understand that part of the process. But essentially, this data is, is saying that, that over these different rolling periods over the last two decades, which includes all sorts of markets, first pandemic in 100 years, the crash of 08, which at that point was the worst thing in 100 years, but turned out that we were novices, uh, the dot-com bust, et cetera. Um, there hasn't been a 40% a, a down, in other words, there hasn't been a loss incurred. You've either got your money back or you've got a positive return back over that uh, three, four or five year period. Yes, and, and it's not to say that um, the index has never fallen 40%, it's sure. just that with the S&P 500, it has this tendency to correct very sharply. So within that five year period, you find yourself 
either within that barrier um, level mm-hmm. of that 40% or net up. Yeah, that's actually a great point. The S&P does come back quickly. I, I remember that in, in, in uh, the, the dot-com. The Nasdaq lagged. We understood why. But I, I was caught flat-footed, still very bearish on the S&P. Uh, um, and truthfully, it had, it had been going up for a year or two before I finally managed to, 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 to realize that. Uh, important date, uh, closing date, 14 September. Uh, that is when you had to have lodged your application via your stockbroker. Uh, trade date. Uh, Brian, trade date is when you will set the s S&P level um, at whatever it might be on that date, 21 September. Will that also then be the uh, currency uh, conversion date? Uh, that's correct. So, so what we would do is we collect all the money uh, 14th of September, it's Friday uh, of the weekend. Uh, we, we make sure everything's uh, you know in the in the accounts and so on. We we do the trade on the 21st. That is the time when we will set the index, the closing mm-hmm. level of the index on that date and make the, the currency um, conversion at that point. So hopefully we have a little bit more RAND strength uh, going into that uh, so that we get in at a nice level. And, uh, <laughs> um, you know, <laughs> over, I think the South African investor has, has become very accustomed to the, uh, to the RAND weakening over time, which it, it tends to do because of that interest rate differential, mm-hmm. but uh, it always helps to have a good entry point. Yeah. Yeah, and then I'm wondering if they want the, the index weaker or higher because if it's lower, then I'm going to get maybe better. But if it's higher, then, yeah, okay, I'm not even, I went down that rabbit hole in my brain and, and, and it got a, a little bit confused. Uh, and then listing 29 September, it, it, and it will, folks, it will, it will appear in your, 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 your stockbroker account, wherever you have your JSC account. It will pop up in, in your account. You will be able to see it. As we said, you can exit early. The plan is not to. And then ultimate maturity, if it's not called in year three or four, will obviously be 21 September 2025. Uh, folks, if you've got questions, drop them in. I, I see there's actually a couple coming to me on Twitter. Uh, the first question was, uh, is this part of my offshore allowance? Uh, Brian, because you're taking, I, I'm essentially investing into this in RANDs. This is not part of offshore allowance. Um, I will invest in RANDs uh, and importantly be paid in RANDs. So uh, the South African Reserve Bank is uh, not considering this offshore. That, that's correct. So, so it is for Investec itself. So we may make use sure. of our prudential limits to issue these, but uh, it's it's part of the inward listing program on the JSE. Uh, individuals, corporates, and trusts may invest in this uh, as much as they like, with with no uh, uh, you know no restrictions. Mm-hmm. Only asset managers would would be subject to that sort of restriction. And um, just one thing I wanted to to make clear, you know, it is available from stockbrokers. If your particular stockbroker doesn't know about it, uh, please ask them to contact us and we'll make sure that they've got all the details around uh, uh, how to, to apply for this and so on. Perfect, cool. Uh, another question, uh, in fact, question coming through. I'm an investor client. Do I still need a stockbroker to invest? Can I just transfer directly? It's still going to need a, 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 a broker account because in, in, in jargon speak, you're going to need that BDA. That, that's exactly it. Uh, so uh, if it's a client from Investec, uh, we would encourage them to speak to Investec Wealth and Investments who mm-hmm. are the, the people that run the stockbroking account. Similarly, if, uh, if a client doesn't have a, a stockbroking account, uh, the easiest way is generally to go through their own bank. Uh, all the major banks have their own stockbroker. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, you, they can open accounts with the minimal of FICA nowadays. Uh, and then there's one or two platforms, uh, online platforms, that, that uh, make it very easy nowadays to invest in these types of products. Yeah, and if you invest a client, speak to your to your uh, banker, and, and they can they can hook you up with an Investec brokerage account. Uh, quick, quick uh, anonymous question coming through, Brian. I think you touched on this. Uh, is it possible to invest in a via a company or a trust? Yes, very much so. So that's uh, part of the inward listing rules. Companies and trusts mm-hmm. uh, can can apply for these, and that's that's one of the attractions of these is that. You know, you no longer have to, you're, you're getting an offshore investment without going through the hassle of actually taking money offshore, finding a stockbroker, making an investment offshore, making sure that 
the, the Saab is happy with your latest tax returns before you're allowed to take off yeah. more than a million. All of those things are, are taken out of the equation by just simply buying it on the JSC. A uh, question coming through on my, on my Twitter, uh, if, if, it, if it's called early or even if it runs the full period, but let's say it's called in, in September 2023, um, will it roll into a new one automatically? I think not, but you will issue, if it's called early, you will then issue a, a, a new one, I imagine, perhaps with different you know, numbers depending. But you know, if it's called in 23, uh, you guys will then issue a, a new one that would then uh, restart. Yes, so, so in most of these cases, well, almost all of them, we've always uh, issued a new structured product uh, to coincide with the ending of, of the previous one. As you said, it might be slightly different. We might have a, a view that uh, the S&P 500 is, is due for a, for a rally, and so we wouldn't offer an order call. We'd mm-hmm. offer something with geared upside, for example. But uh, we always like to, to offer a new product. You don't get automatically rolled. Yeah, you don't get so you you will get cashed out uh, someone's asking me about tax i'm not the expert here i like the point there speak to the expert but the short answer is is that uh SARS typically says if you've held it for three years it is capital gain in nature but uh speak to the tax experts there uh, another question coming through uh is this similar to the previous uh auto call uh that you guys issued with a three and a half year term i'm trying to rack my brain did that one get called i, I remember there was one a couple of years ago but, I can't believe it was maybe four years ago already. Um, there, there was one that, um, well, there is one that's going to expire in November. Oh, okay. Very similar. Uh, it was a digital on the Ah, S&P yes, that's right. Uh, it was three and a half years long. It was in US dollars. Uh, uh, one of our better ones, I must say, it's around that, it's about 70 odd percent up at, at the moment. <laughs> uh, some in RAND and some in S&P. Uh, that, the difference there was that it only had one expiry date. So there was no year four or five if it, if it was down. Uh, but that's an example of one that we'll be bringing out in November, a new product that people can roll into. Yeah. Um, and here's another one. So this is Greg on my Twitter. At, at, at Greg, you, you're asking some bending questions here. Greg says, if I've got some local S&P 500 ETFs, uh, could he give those to you in lieu of cash? I, I think you've done that in the past, but that was years back. Yes, uh, Simon, that, that was under a, a sort of different program. Uh, for these particular ones, we, we don't. Um, mm-hmm. We, the investor in that case would have to sell those particular ones and put the investment amounts into, into this new product. Yeah, Greg, and, and the selling will incur, and these days costs are quite low, uh, might have a tax yeah. implication for you, but that, that's often how it works. Yeah. Uh, this product first, the China Seas structured product. Uh, the China Seas, different in a couple of senses, uh, that is listed offshore, so it's not a JSC listed product, um, and that had a fairly strong uh, ESG bend to it. Yes, so, so that's an example of, of one of our other structures that we have. Uh, in Guernsey, and in that particular case, you had to go through the process of externalizing your, yeah. your RANDs into dollars. Um, through that process, you then have an investment that is offshore in, uh, completely in nature rather than just through a currency conversion. Yeah, and, and, and in essence, the, the, the folks at Investec almost run sort of two parallels. The one is the, the, the when the money's been externalized, the other is, is, is for internal. Uh, and exactly your fees right. on it, uh, Brian, we touched on fees. I mean, in essence, there are fees involved. That will include, obviously, uh, fees internal to Investec, profit for Investec, uh, fees to the brokers. But the, the, the product, as I put my 100000 in, and let's say there's zero rand movement, um, the payout is ultimately, to me, net of fees yes that's correct so so we pay the the advisor but that that is external to this product mm-hmm. so we, we as the investec will pay the advisor or stockbroker uh however that's uh you know net of all fees as you said so you know in, in these cases in the structured product um we we provide for that within it so uh let's say for example uh, there were no fees in it and or uh, we would maybe be able to be pay eight and a half percent per annum. But what we've done is we've taken all of that out of the way and said, here is the investment. If you're happy with an eight percent return, 
uh, per annum in US dollars. Uh, net of all fees, you know that there are no fees. The only fees that could possibly come in is if you sold it early, then your stockbroker would charge you brokerage at that point. Yes, ah, good point. Yes, yes, there will be a, a bro, and that only applicable if 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 you gain to exit early. Uh, question for Marty. Marty, I'm not 100 percent sure I got the question. How does this compare to to structured notes? And in essence, this is exactly a structured note. And if we're looking at sort of exchange traded notes, um, it, it very much similar to it. Exchange traded notes have a, a duration. Uh, you know, we we discovered that with a bunch of the one invests that expired uh, earlier in August uh, that had been issued a, a decade ago. Um, so it's so very similar, and, and certainly, I mean, we call them structured products. We could probably, I suppose, Brian, in a sense, they are broadly structured notes as well, I suppose. Uh, yes, uh, that equity linked notes is yeah. another name. So, yeah. There we go. Yeah. As, 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 yeah. What, 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 Shakespeare has a phrase for that, but my Shakespeare phrase, oh, Rose would be, uh, no, I'm not going to do my Shakespeare this morning. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll park that there. Folks, I'm not seeing any more questions coming through and we're nudging our time. Uh, we'll, the video will be up uh, within the next uh, 30 minutes, half an hour or so. Uh, there, and on that video link, which will get mailed to everyone, uh, there will be the full brochure with more details, uh, more contact details if you want. As Brian said, if you're wondering why your broker doesn't offer it, uh, quickly just uh, hit up your broker and say, hey, there's a, a, a product, an auto call from Investec, uh, please uh, arrange it. And, and they certainly will be able uh, to offer. Uh, Brian, Sonia, appreciate your time. Uh, Brian, any key points that we have missed that you quickly want to touch on or are we uh, done and dusted? Uh, no, I think we've got everything in there. I really appreciate your time, Simon. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Greg, I see you're asking on Twitter, do I like these? Yeah, um, and so my sister had some of the, I think, Brian, it was your very early top 40 ones, and she did spectacularly well out of them. Um, and and then she pivoted into the offshore ones. I like them. I, I, I think we were saying up front, you know, in, in the olden days, you bought a share, and, and, and then we got ETFs that come along. And I think within a, a portfolio, I think structured notes, that they, that they fit a place within that portfolio. Uh, and particularly if we look at markets now and we look at the world out there, uh, something that's given some downside protection, always like that. And, and you know, the risk is the market shoots up 60% in the next three years, uh, but we'll have other investments. This isn't a, you know, everything goes into it. So broadly, I like them. I like this auto call. I like the way it's structured. I'm always happy with some downside protection. Caveat, of course, if it's more than 40% down, you take the full risk. Uh, Brian McMillan, Sonia Lynch, Investec, appreciate your time. Everyone have a great day further and uh, stay safe out there, everybody. Cheers.